this is uh, the second lecture in the series on metric spaces uh, i hope you had already seen some typical examples of metric spaces in the last lecture as i said in that lecture in all future lectures whenever we introduce a new concept i will always use this set of examples to explain those concepts so that is the way to kind of have a very mastery over the subject okay unless there is a need don't look for new examples okay the same examples you may master it thoroughly okay so that whenever you need a theorem or when somebody asks your questions and you don't know whether the answer is yes or no you can quickly go through these examples and check whether it's going to be true or not if okay that way you can make a, some kind of a guess conjecture what's going to happen so this is a trick to learn nothing to do with my metric spaces in every subject you very discipline of mathematics okay right so without much ado let us start the thing let us start start sharing the screen yeah so we are go we have a metric space xd okay and we want to define a subset called an open ball okay so this is the definition this is called bx r where x is a fixed point r is a positive real number this by definition is must a subset whenever you define a subset what do you do give me any point y in x i have to tell you when y belong to bxr okay you don't list all of them okay what you do is you give a condition so that this y belongs to that or y does not belong to that what is the condition it is set up all y in x so that distance between y and x is less than r you understand that so if i give a y so that distance between y and x is greater than or equal to r that y is not going to be here okay this is called open ball and with the center at x radius r right and sometime if i have two metric spaces it may be necessary to distinguish so in that case one will write bx xr this means this is an open ball in b suppose there is another metric space y and d then i may write by y r this will be an open ball in the metric space y and there is also another reason a slightly more complicated notation suppose on the same set i have two metrics d1 and d2 then to do you know which ball i am talking about i may write it b1 xr can you guess what this is the set of all y in x okay so that distance between y and x is less than r and what will be d2 b of d2 xr this is d2 the distance between y and x is less than r you understand so if unless there is a need for us to write we will not be very precise we will simply write bxr do all of you agree with that okay so this case occurs when they are the metrics are the same space this way i want to write if i want to, if there are two spaces involved then i want to say which space i am talking about which open ball i am talking about so i will introduce another notation which is not a very common notation but this is my notation bxr this is called the closed ball can you guess what it is here you expect the distance should be less than or equal to or equality also allowed okay then this is called closed ball of at center at x radius r okay right okay now there are a lot of different notations some textbooks will write bxr for open ball etc they may write bxr for the closed ball okay for me i will stick to only these two notations okay if you want you have to change the notation for your own purpose or what your textbook or your teacher dictates okay for us this is the one so what we want to do now we want to look at examples of open balls because this definition is very easy immediately teachers and textbook jump into that okay trying to prove some results but what i want to do because 
when there are certain questions about topology when you okay you may have to work with open bars to understand what is happening so you should have fairly good idea how to work with open bar so that's what we plan to do so as usual first exam is r with the standard metric examples of open bars okay one with the standard metric that is absolute value metric distance between x and y is mod x minus y therefore fix a point a in r what is the open ball bar this is set of all real numbers x in r so that distance between x and a is less than r which is same as saying mod x minus a is less than r okay therefore this is nothing other than the open interval a minus r to a plus r yeah so the open ball in euclidean the sorry in real number system is nothing other than open intervals okay good right i want to claim something else this is something you, many many of you may not have observed but i'll do that you give me any open interval let us say a comma b this is an open interval all right i want to say this is any open interval is an open ball any finite open interval okay because you may think a yeah, this is also an open interval then that that's what i'm talking about any finite open interval is an open ball in r why that's true that's very easy suppose now this is what i usually say work backwards suppose i make the claim it's a finite open interval is an open ball okay to define the open ball what do i need i need two things one is what is the center are the rule is what is the radius okay so let us assume ab equal to b c r where c is a real number r is a positive okay then what is that i have to do i have to find what is c what is r but just now we saw if any open ball b c r is nothing other than c minus r to c plus r the open interval therefore if this open interval has to be this open interval that means a must be equal to c minus r b must be equal to c plus r therefore a plus b by 2 must be equal to c and b minus a by 2 will be r that is take ab and take the midpoint that is your c and what is the this radius this is the distance between these two that is half the distance of the interval do you understand this please pay attention okay pause review proceed okay now what is the second example second example is of course rn okay to make as see the picture i will usually assume n equal to 2 so that you can see the picture now and here remember rn we have three matrix what are they d1 d2 and d infinity okay right let us look at d1 what is d1 let me write distance between xy and uv okay this will be easier for me this is mod x minus u plus mod y minus v this is the distance right so what i want to look at is i want to look at the open ball centered at origin and radius 1 with respect to d1 shall we call b1 stand for b d1 what will b2 stand for b d2 and b infinity will stand for the open ball with respect to the metric b infinity so that i don't have to keep writing so much right so i want to know what is b1 the zero vector 1 yeah now let us look at that so what are the points which will be there there are the points x y in r2 so that distance between x y and 0 0 that is mod x plus mod y should be less than 1 do you understand this yeah now how do i figure it out how do i find understand how this looks like so let us look at that so let us first assume we will this is in the first quadrant that is here right now i want to know given a point okay whether it is going to be there right so if x y belong to the first quadrant 
right? Then x is positive, greater than or equal to zero, y is also greater than or equal to zero. Therefore, if it has to be in this open ball, then mod x plus mod y should be less than one. Is same as saying x plus y should be less than one. Do you understand this? Yeah. So now, what is x plus y equal to one? That is a line which joins this point zero comma one and one comma zero. I see, I may not be able to join properly. I hope you know the. Yeah, good. Okay, this is a line, right? Therefore, any point in between these three things, that is, this part of the y-axis, this part of the x-axis, and below this line, all these points will be there, right? And similarly, in the second quadrant. Okay, in the second quadrant, x is negative, therefore it's minus x, right? If x y belong to that, that means mod x plus mod y should be less than one. If x y belong to the second quadrant, x is negative, therefore mod x is minus x. Therefore, what do I have? Minus x plus y should be less than one. Therefore, I am looking for minus x plus y equal to one line. That again, you know how to do that. Okay. Okay, like that. And the third one, I'm sure that you know why you know this. And the fourth one will be this. Okay. So this is the, this is going to be, of course, minus one comma zero. This is going to be zero comma minus one. You see that that's a square. So open ball need not be a ball, it's a square, it's a box, okay? You understand that? So now it's an open ball, that means none of the points on the lines are included. Only the points which are inside are included. The, only these are the points which are included. Do you understand this? Okay, please pause, review, and then proceed. The next case is B2, again, 0, 1. Okay, right, okay. But that is very clear because what is the condition? If x, y belong to this, that means x, okay, x squared plus y squared and square root of this. This is the distance, right? This must be less than one. This is less than one if only if x squared plus y squared is less than one. Do you follow that? Zero less than a less than b. We talked about, okay, in earlier things. If, okay, a and b are positive, then a is less than b. If only b squared less than equal to b squared, right? And if it belong to this, this means distance between d to distance between x y and zero zero. That is this object that should be less than one. That means this. But equality one is the as you know this is a circle. Okay, so this is a circle of radius one and center at origin. So anything inside this is the open disk. Okay. And the next thing is B infinity, okay? In the last lecture, you may remember when I defined the product metric on the Cartesian product, I said it's very similar to the D max or D infinity metric. So I left it for you to check, okay? So at, to atone for my sin there, what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave this as an exercise, but I will prove it how do open bars look like in a product metric. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, in the case of metric, this is similar to, I said, product metric. So I proved the result here. I did not prove the result. Here, the product, open ball in the product space and open ball in the d infinity metric. Here I will prove what it is. And this I will use an exercise because they are very similar. Do you see the fun? Very good. Okay, right. Now let's look at some more examples. Okay, the this is the next thing. Okay, remember you know the two, two had three, two, three, four, right? Is two a, two b, two c. Okay, therefore actually there are four examples. Okay, now anyway, let's go to look at c. Now suppose x is I said with the d as a discrete metric. 
I'm sure all of you know this, right? Right. Now let us look at suppose V X R, where X is here, R is a positive real number. Remember that the metric takes only two values, either zero or one. Either you are with me or you are not. Okay, that's the kind of metric, right? Okay. So what does this mean? This is set of all y such that distance between y and x is less than or v in x, right? Now this is either zero or this is one. You understand this? So naturally there is very interesting thing you want to look at. So what is this? So if zero less than or less than or equal to one, what is bxr? That is set of all y in x such that distance between y and x should be less than one. Okay. So it takes only value one and zero. Therefore it has to take the value only zero. That means y distance between y and x must be zero. That means this the only point which is here is singleton x. Did you understand the? Yes. Yes. But suppose r is greater than one. Then what is bxr? It is set up all y so that it is y and x so that distance between y and x is less than r right but but remember r is greater than one this will be at best zero or one therefore what does it mean give me any y its distance has to be zero which is less than r and it is distance may be one in that case it's still less than r because r is greater than one therefore this is complete set x okay you see that therefore the open balls here are essentially single terms if r is less than or equal to one if r is greater than one it's either full space this is some kind of extreme case yeah okay and fourth let us look at do you remember we looked at induced metric on a subset So A is a subset of a matrix space X, D is a matrix, okay? Then, now you see that I want to look at that. I have B A X R, where X is in A, and B X X R. There are two open sets. So this is something like this is the set X, okay? And this is my A, right? Now I want to look at open balls, right? Now remember, what does this mean? What is the definition of B, X, R? This is by definition, set of all Y in A, okay? So that, what happens? Distance between Y and X is less than one. Sorry, less than R. Keep it R, okay, it doesn't matter. You follow that? Okay, but what is B, X, R? This is set of all Y in Y, so that distance between Y, and x is less than r. Now, what is the difference between them? Notice that. So far, uh, you give me a z in x. When does z belong to this? This b a x r. You can see that z has to be in a, and then the distance between z and x must be less than r. For the z to be in b x r, distance between z and x should be less than r. So Z, if it has to be in this set BX, or it has to satisfy two conditions, namely Z must be in A and Z must be in this. Satisfy this condition. So do you see the what is happening? Yes. So this is what is happening. If I have X here and this is my R, okay. And okay, what is this? Okay, this is my BA. This is BA XR. Whereas this is this is B X XR. Do you follow that? Therefore, what have you found? You have found that BA XR is very simple. I only have to find what is BXR and intersect with A. That's it. Yeah? 
let us look at a very concrete example before we go further a very specific example okay let x equal to r with the standard metric and a equal to let us say 0 1 closed right okay now suppose my x is let us say something like uh, 3 fourths x equal to 3 fourths in a is that in a yes now let me say r equal to half then let us look at this this is my r this is my zero so this is open this is my one and this is my three fours right so what do i want i want half the radius right so that's going to be like this and this so this is my b r x half you follow that so that is going to be half the force will be one fourth and three fourths plus half will be five fourths that is this interval but what is going to be this it is going to be only this one this is my this interval do you follow that and suppose i take r is greater than one okay i i can simply take even i mean all right okay r is greater than one then what will happen three fourths i do you see that what will be b a x r in this case x is three fourths r is let us say even yeah one will do that that means i have three fourths minus one that is minus one fourth and three fourths plus one that is of uh, Okay, that is seven, seven by four. I hope I did my mathematics correctly. Okay, if it's slightly wrong, don't worry about that. So this is, will be your BR. Okay, three fourths at one. Okay, but here it will be, when I intersect, it's going to be, okay, what will be BA three fourths one? That will be zero of one close. Okay, pause proceed i hope i am correct if there is a small mistake don't worry i'm sure all of you are more careful than i am yeah you will do it better okay right now let's look at the fifth example i think this is the fifth example yeah do you remember and you're given a metric space x d we introduce a metric beta. What does beta of xy? It is minimum of 1 and distance between x and y. What are the things we observed? We observed a lot of things. Beta xy is less than equal to 1. Beta xy is also less than equal to dxy, etc, etc. Right? Very good. Now what I want to do? What I want to do is, now see, on the same space now, I have two metrics, d and beta. So I want to look at b d x r and b beta x r you follow that now suppose r is less than or equal to one of course positive do you see that they are equal because what is this when does y belong to this y belong to this if only distance between x and r is strictly less than one if distance between x and r is strictly less than one then what will be beta of xr that's also strictly less than one conversely if suppose beta xr is strictly less than one okay then what should it be beta xy must be either one on dxy but i know it's strictly less than one therefore it must be dxy right therefore dx uh, uh, y is not r dxy is less than one if and only if beta xy is less than one you follow that therefore if this if zero less than r less than equal to one what we conclude is b day x r equal to b beta x r if zero is less than or equal to r less than sorry less, less than r less than or equal to one okay Okay, I hope you understood this. 
Pause, review, proceed. Suppose R is greater than 1. Then let's look at B beta XR. This is at all Y in capital X, so that the beta distance between X and Y should be le less than R. But notice that this is always less than or equal to 1. Therefore, what does it mean? The every Y in X lies here. That means this is equal to X. Did you catch my point? Yeah. So when does Y belong to this? Beta XY must be less than R. But what do I know about beta XY? Beta XY is always less than or equal to 1. At most it's 1. Therefore, 1 is less than R. Therefore, give me any Y that Y has to be in beta X. Right? On the other hand, this may not happen. Right? For example, in R, Okay, with respect to standard metric D and beta metric, if I take 0, all right, if I take R equal to 2, I'll have minus 2, 2 plus 2. This will be the standard open ball with respect to this metric. Whereas with respect to beta metric, it will be all of R. Yeah. So pause, review, and then proceed. Now comes the sixth example. Right? Okay. What is the sixth example? Sixth example is let us look at XD a metric space. Okay. And YD also a metric space. See, I usually teachers will write D suffix X, D suffix Y. But if I write distance between X1, X2, okay, you you I think all of us are intelligent, even though I do, I don't say what is x1 x2 what do you expect this must be the distance on x right and suppose i write distance y1 y2 if i didn't specify y1 y2 all of us will intuitively believe it will be this only if i write d of z1 z2 you may not know okay <laughs> you understand this i don't know i have to specify where z1 z2 are. so context will make it clear whether i am talking about distance on x or the distance on y because I believe my students are intelligent, they will usually will not be confused. From the context, they should understand. And also it's a good training for the brain to work. Okay, anyway, let's go that. So what is our metric D? Again, this is a metric D. So distance between X1, Y1 and X2, Y2. Where are they? Now you know what they are. This is by definition, maximum of distance between X1, X2, and distance between y1, y2. You follow that? Yeah. This is my x. This is my y. Okay. This is, so I have two points. And what do I do? So this is the point x point here. This is the point in the product space. And let us look at the points in the x space. And the product in the, the points on the y space. Right? So look at this distance and take the maximum. Okay, that's what it meant. Okay, good. Now I want to know what is. Oh, oh let me change the thing. Oh, yeah. I want to know what is B of. Oh, I don't want that. What is B of D of? x y come on so where is x y x y is in x plus y r is positive what is d the product metric so what is this this is the top all points u come of v where in x plus y with what property distance between u come of v and x come of y should be less than r but what is this by definition this is the maximum of what maximum of distance between u and x and distance between v and y this should be less than r you understood that this this is same as this yeah okay now we are through do you follow what is happening yeah so suppose u v belong to this okay suppose u v belong to 
bd of x y r now i don't even have to do that d okay you will know what this d is okay suppose what does it mean maximum of duvx and duy therefore in particular duvx should be less than r and duvy must be less than r you follow that yes but suppose u be u is in x b is in y so that distance between u and x is less than r distance between v and y is less than r then maximum is also less than r that means this happens if only this happens do all of you agree with that yeah but what does this mean this means the first condition says u must be in bxr see this both must happen okay and second says v must be in byr do you follow that yeah therefore what does that mean this means the the pair belong to bxr now i am not writing on capital x you understand that because x is in x therefore this must be the open ball in x otherwise i should write capital x okay and b y r yeah so what do you think i have found i have found that b x y r is nothing other than b x r intersection sorry not intersection product b y r so now work out the case r r2 with the d infinity metric find out what is b0 1 geometrically identified okay all right now let's look at only one or two examples about closed ball do you remember how do we define closed ball this is set of all y this x d is any metric space now right now let us look at xd to be discrete metric d is discrete now right now let us look at what is bx r okay when 0 less than or equal to r less than 1 and what is open ball bx r this we already know it is x and this by definition is y in x so the distance between y and x should be Less than or equal to r, but remember r is strictly less than one. That means the only possibility this has to be zero. That means this must be singleton x. You understand that? So closed ball for uh, r less than one equal to one. Yeah. But on the other hand, let us look at b x one when r equal to one also this singleton x. But we already saw b Closed ball x one. This is equal to set of all y in x, such so that distance between y and x should be less than or equal to one. But give me any y. Okay, distance between y and x is either zero or one. Therefore, every point is therefore this is capital X. Yeah. But on the other hand, in the case of R, let us say start with x equal to zero, R equal to anything, then the op open ball is minus R to plus R. But the closed ball is minus R to plus R closed in trouble. Okay. Before I stop the lecture, there is one important thing which will be nice to keep that in mind. You see that so far, in the case of R two and hence in R n, I looked at only the open balls or closed balls centered at origin and radius one. But I can also make it R. That is not important. Instead of x plus y equal to one, it will be x plus y equal to R, etc. Okay, you can do that. That's not problem. Yeah, but important thing is, see, suppose I have an open, I have a point, let us say B X Y, and R. Okay, well, how will I get it? I already know what is B zero R. Okay, let me just look at only the R two with the D two case. This is this one. This circle of radius R. Okay, center at origin, right? And B X Y R. I am simply saying 
it is just take point x y and translate that circle okay just translate it what do i mean by that the key observations are following suppose take so let me start with r and now and with respect to any one of the metric d1 d2 d infinity i am claiming the following okay this you should check where is easy okay take any two points x y in rn and start with any vector v in rn then i can translate x plus v and y plus v right this may be okay this may be my x okay this may be my v then i can translate it this is my x plus v and similarly y i can translate you understand that now what is the relation between this d could be any one of them either d1 or d2 or d infinity this is nothing other than distance between x and y that is translation does not change the distance do you follow that let us work out at least one case right let me write okay what is x plus v x1 plus v1 plus x1 plus vn right okay distance between this and y1 plus v1 plus yn plus vn which one you want me to check with d1 or d2 or d infinity anyone right yeah suppose i want to check with the d1 what is d1 that is take the first coordinate subtract the second coordinate from that and take modulo that is x1 plus v1 minus y1 minus v1 okay and x2 plus v2 minus y2 minus v2 and so on therefore this is nothing other than x1 minus y1 x2 minus y2 in modulus and so on you see that therefore this is true similarly for this is for d1 i checked it similarly you can check it for d2 and d infinity now what is the advantage of this advantage of this is the following so open ball at b x r where x is an rn and d is any one of the metric d1 d2 d infinity is nothing other than translated by b0 or that's it why does that happen you understand what i'm writing what is this x plus y what is the meaning this set of all points x plus y where y is in b0 this is the meaning of this okay this object remember this is a set whereas this is whereas this is a point therefore i have to define what is meant by sum this is a vector this set of vectors so i add each of these vectors to x that's what it is okay how do i prove that okay all right i am going to use make use of this observation suppose y belong to I mean, let us call it z z belong to be xr okay what does that mean that mean the distance between z and x is less than r now what is that i want to write i want to say z belong to this set okay i want to say z belong to this set what does that mean x is fixed set so what is unknown x z must be of the form x plus y for where y must be here therefore i have to find what is y do you understand this that's a question but that's very easy look at algebra this says y may be z minus x okay algebraically z equal to x plus y that's correct but that's not enough i have to check whether y belong to b0 or right when does y belong to b0 or if only d of y and 0 must be less than r but what is distance between y and 0 this is distance between z minus x and zero must be less than r yeah you understand now remember the, the translation invariance of the metric which i just now defined this is if and only you okay distance between z minus x plus x and zero plus x is less than r but what is this this is if and only you distance between z and x is less than r you Okay, I went a little fast perhaps, but I'm sure all of you are very good. 
so you should be able to catch and understand okay let me go through i start with the z here i want to write say z belong to this that means i should be able to write z equal to x plus y where y y should be in b0 or first can i solve for y yes that's very easy algebra put y equal to z minus x we are in a vector space this is therefore this has a meaning very good but that's not enough i have to show y belong to b0 or why when does y belong to b0 or if distance between y and 0 is less than or but what is y z minus x therefore distance between z minus x and 0 must be less than or now we are using the translation invariance of the metric d d1 d2 d infinity okay add x to both sides both the vector z minus x plus x that will be z and 0 plus x will be x therefore this is less than or if and only if distance between z and x is less than or so we have proved bxr is nothing other than b0 or therefore if i want an open ball what i have to do is i take the open ball here and translate it this is my xy okay this is radius r this is also radius r i just have to translate it okay so pause review proceed i think i have done all those things okay there is one more thing before i finish okay just a curiosity question suppose i have a matrix space x d okay and i have an x here and suppose this is my bxr capital r r is positive right now start this is my x right now what i know is i am given a small y here so y belong to this i want to know whether i can put a find an r positive so that by byr is contained in bxr see that pictorial it looks it's possible all right if i put here i can put a bigger one if i put here i will put a very small one you follow that if i put here i can get a bigger one like that depending upon the thing and you can see the moment my y is very near to the so called the boundary where r is going to be attained okay this r must be small right intuition okay now is it true okay so what is the question okay given for every y that there exists an r okay this r will depend upon y that's what we saw for this y r may be big for this r slightly smaller for this r smaller this is very small like that okay this r depends on x okay now how do you prove such a thing there are two things geometrically you can motivate okay suppose this is the one suppose this is the point y then how much distance i can go here and suppose this is the distance this is the distance between this is my x x and y and this total r therefore this 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 distance will be this distance will be r minus d of x y so this may be my possible choice of r maybe this this is intuition but there is another way of looking at this is my favorite way i call it working backwards if you have seen my videos on analysis etc various things i am very fond of that working back suppose there exists an r okay that means what there exists an r assume there is an r so that byr is contained in bxr right now start with the z in byr right that means z must belong to bxr what does that mean that means distance between z and x must be less than r right now let's look at the picture okay you follow that yeah but what do i know what do i know 
See, I I want to estimate the distribution z and x. What do I know is this. Are you following me? Go slow. Uh, when I introduce triangle inequality, do you remember what I said? I will write it distance between x and y is less than between distance between x and t plus distance between t and y for any possible choice of t in the space. So if I want to estimate this polo, I can choose my t very smartly. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. So I want to estimate distance between z and x. Okay, how do I estimate? I know z belong to this, right? Z belong to b is y r. That means distance between z and y I know. And where does y belong to? Y belong to r, right? Y belong to b x r. Therefore, distance between that must be less than r. Yes. Therefore, what do I want is distance between z and distance between z and y are, uh, are, of, are all of you following me? Yeah, this should be less than r. Therefore, distance between z and y plus, okay. And distance between, where is it? y and x. Yeah. So let me draw a picture. This is the thing. I have, this is my R. Okay. This is my Y. This is my Z. Right. This is the ball here. This is my Z. So what do I want? I want to find an estimate for R. Right. Therefore, this is less than or equal to R plus because ZY that belong to R, R plus DYX. Okay. So if I use this is less than R, I'm through. Are you following? This is distance between Z and Y. Okay. And distance between Y and X. Okay. This is Y and X. This is X. Okay. Therefore, distance between, I want it to be less than R. Yes. That means my I have an estimate for R, therefore choose R to be R minus distance between O and X. Did you follow this? So I'm working backwards, start with the Y, assume there is an R, I want to find an estimate for R. Okay, I do not know which R, whatever R, okay, suppose there is an R, then start with any Z, then distance between Z and Y, this one, plus distance between Y and X, okay. I have that. So that will be the distance between Z and X. Okay. Distance between Z and X will be less than or equal to distance between Z and Y and Y and X. You see, that is my T here. T is Y. Okay. That is my curry leaf. So I got this. So this is less than R because this, this I do not know. But D, Y is fixed. X is also fixed. Therefore, this is a fixed number for me. Do you understand? Therefore, R, this will be less than equal to R because Z may be anything in the ball B, Y, R. Therefore, I cannot have, at best, it will be R. So, it's strictly less than R. Maybe if you want, it is strictly less than R. Okay, plus D, O, X. So, this must be less than R. Therefore, what should be R? This. So, choose this R. Then I have to prove that. Now, it's very easy. So, let R equal to this. The typical proof we can give. Then we claim BYR is contained in BXR. Take Z here, then distance between Z and X. It will then equal distance between Z and Y plus distance between Y and X. But this is less than R, but R is R minus distance between Y and X plus distance between Y and X, which is equal to R. See, very trivial verification. Okay, this is verification. Whereas what we did was, we discovered what the R should be. First we did using geometric thinking, the other one is by logical thinking, by working backwards. Okay, so I think we will stop with this and go through the last proof once again, because we will need that later in the next lecture. Okay, I will not repeat. Hmm? Is that understood? I will not repeat. We are given a lot of good 
examples and illustrations and the last point is very very important for metric space theory you are going to see that so please please review that okay thank you very much we shall meet